How you doing? Welcome back, or hello for the first time. Uh, today we're going to make brownies, just chocolate brownies, plain old normal chocolate brownies. Um, I just made marmalade, Dundee marmalade. Um, if you want to see that, I'll try and put it in the eye or whatever. Um, but it took me all day, um, so I want to hum that it's not going to take me all day and something that um, I can eat without putting on bread. Um, I can't just eat marmalade out of the jar, you know. I want, I want something. I want something tasty. So we're going to make uh, brownies. Don't really know what other kind of introduction is needed for brownies. Just chocolate brownies. Everyone knows what a brownie is. Um, so yeah, I'm going to show you the ingredients we have, and then we'll go for there. All right. So here is my ingredients. We have 283 grams of unsalted butter, 227 grams of chocolate. You can use any chocolate you want. You can use sort of bitter sweet chocolate, dark chocolate, whatever you want. I am using Galaxy because Galaxy is dino. We have unsweetened uh, cocoa powder. Um, the reason we have two is because we need 60 grams in one and 35 grams in the other because we're going to do different things with them. We have 402 grams of granulated sugar, 110 grams of dark brown sugar. We have vanilla extract. We've got salt and we have six eggs. Six eggs. We also have 136 grams of flour. It's just plain flour. There's no self-rising in it and there's no rising agent because we're going to whip the absolute living hell out of the eggs. I am going to add these to my brownies. I got these in a box from Iceland. Someone called January Garnet Art on Instagram sent me this as well as lots of other lovely goodies. Um, I also have a video unboxing what they sent. Um, these are basically little chocolate nibbles and inside are like honeycomb pieces and they are delicious. Excuse the lighting in these videos, I can't, I can't figure out how to do it properly. Anyway, you just have your oven preheating at 180 degrees, 160 if you've got a fan, gas mark 4 and I think that's 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Next you're going to want to prep your tin. I have what I believe to be a brownie tin here. It's a square tin, like, I don't know. It's the biggest brownie tin I've got. I actually think it may be a roasting tin, but I'm going to use this brownie tin today. Um, so I'm going to prep my tin by getting butter and basically buttering the inside and then we're going to paper the inside, then we're going to butter the paper, right? So let's do that. So you're going to want to take your paper and have it overlap in your tin because you can use that as handles to get your brownie out later on. And then we're going to butter it again. Ta da! So we're going to set that to the side for now and we're going to wash our hands. What we're going to do now is get a jug. In the jug, we're going to put our chocolate. And we're also going to put the 60 grams of chocolate powder into this as well. The reason we're doing that is because we're going to melt butter and put it in here and make a kind of ganache almost. So we're going to go melt the butter now. So we'll put this to the side. So here is the butter in the saucepan. All we're going to do is melt the butter in the saucepan and cook it for about five minutes until it's like almost boiling. Um, it has to be really, really, really hot. So I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. So you can hear it's starting to sizzle. So we're almost there. We're just looking to, for it to start to sort of bubble and boil. As soon as it does that, we have to take it straight back over again and pour it right over our chocolate as fast as we can. Obviously safely without burning ourselves or anything. The 
it's starting to go, so I'm going to put my camera back over and then you can see me pouring it into my jar. So that's how big it is simmer and we're just going to pour that straight over our chocolate. Once we've poured our butter into our chocolate, uh, let it sit for a minute or so, um, just let it do its thing for a wee second. Um, we're basically wanting the butter to melt all the chocolate in there enough so that when we stir it, it turns into a ganache. This is where my patience is highly tested because I really don't have the patience to wait. Once two minutes has passed, get your whisk and start whisking. You're basically whisking until it is fully all combined and smooth. That's where this comes in because I use this to scrape all along the edges to make sure it all comes up because there is some pesky dry bits of chocolate at the bottom and we don't want them stuck. This is now fully combined, there's no lumps, there's no dry spots and it's all very smooth and silky. So we're going to keep this to the side for now because that is that bit dealt with. Now we're going to move to my stand mixer. So let's do that. Okay, so Say hello to my stand mixer. I've actually had him for like five years. Marcus bought me this when I first met him on our first Christmas. Uh, but when he did that, the size of kitchen we had was like Harry Potter's bedroom. It had a fridge, a cooker and a sink and a window and that was it. So I've not been able to use this at all. And then even my shed kitchen, there wasn't a lot of room for it. So now I can use it. So we're gonna use this just now. So all we're gonna do is shove in our uh, Sugar, our brown sugar, our salt, which is two teaspoons. I know you're thinking, like, well, that's a ton of salt for like a recipe, but salt actually just brings out the flavour of things when it's in bacon. It shouldn't taste salty at all, um, so it'll be alright. It's fine. Two teaspoons of vanilla extract as well. Boop. So we're going to put it down and we're going to add the eggs gradually. Now I've already just went ahead and pre-whisked all my six eggs, but six large eggs as you know. So we'll just put it on the one now. I'm turning it off quickly just to let you know. What we're going to do now is once the eggs are in, we're going to put it up high and we're going to basically whisk it until it's steady, light and fluffy, like a really, really fluffy uh, cake mix. It almost go really, really pale, um, but I'll show you what we're looking for. So I'm going to put it up high and then I'll come back to you. Okay, so I've turned this off now um, and you can see there's some difference in the way it looks. It looks very much like pancake batter or cake batter now. It's very, very light and fluffy. Um, I've tried to tip it to the side so you can sort of see. But yeah, we're looking for this light, fluffy consistency. It's almost doubled in size as well. So what we're going to do is put this back down. Then we're going to take our jug of really tasty chocolate stuff. We're going to zoom out a tiny wee bit. And we're going to put this back on while gradually pouring this in. I'm not going to say anything while pouring this in because this is going to be going and this is so loud that you can't hear me anyway. So just know that you're not missing anything. All I'm doing is pouring this in here. It has to be up high when you do this. It also has to be up high when it's making it into a light batter. It took about 10 to 15 minutes to get it to this consistency on high. You can use a hand whisk as well. Uh, it might take longer and it's very boring. But anyway, this is going to go on high now. Alright, so we've combined all the chocolate, so we're just going to take it out and have a wee, a wee look-see. Oh, I think that looks great. So we're just going to take that off and put it straight in the sink. As you can see, we have a fantastic airy chocolate batter. So now we're going to put our dry ingredients in. Alright, so we've got our chocolate batter in here and then we've got our flour and we've got our chocolate powder. So we're just going to sieve these into this mixture um, 
and then we're going to fold it in because we spent all that time trying to get the air in we don't want to knock the air out I'm just using a spatula to fold because I feel like spatulas are the way to go when you fold um, I know some people like to use like a metal knife and all that kind of stuff but you'd be there all day I mean and as, as far as brownies go this isn't the shortest recipe in the world so you kind of just want to get going and eating don't you Buddha are you okay? <laughs> Bloody hell. Right. So, let's see if I can zoom in. There we go. So you're basically just folding. So I, I use that to cut across and then use a little bit to paddle to sort of fold it round. You want to combine it quickly, um, but without knocking all the air out. Which is probably easier said than done. But quickly but also be patient. <laughs> is that a thing? Is it possible to be quick at something but also be patient at it? Seems like an oxymoron to be quick and patient. No? I don't know. So as you can tell I'm just scraping the sides as well because we're going to pour out of this jug as well, so I don't really want to have it dragging across any dry bits and you want to incorporate all the dry that you can. So let's put this in a tin. So we have our prepared tin and then we're just going to pour this in. And then We're going to sprinkle on top, oops, sprinkle on top our uh, wee bits. You may say it's probably enough. Um, so now we're going to put this brownie in the oven for 20 minutes um, and then after 20 minutes we're going to take it out and then bash it about a bit and then put it back in the oven. Right, so we're taking them out after 20 minutes, they're not cooked right? What we're going to do, strangely, is just tap it. Now tapping it is supposed to crack the top but it's not so I'm just going to slightly crack the top because what is a brownie if it's not cracked? Now, and then we put it back in for another 20 minutes. You may be thinking to yourself this is pointless. You may be right but that's what I'm doing. So 20 minutes again back in the oven. So we're just going to test it by putting a stick in there. Um, the stick's going to come out wet, but it has to come out fudgy, not wet. Um, and you can see there that it didn't come out fudgy, it just came out wet. If you can see, can you see? Yeah. So it didn't come out fudgy, it came out wet, which means it's not cooked properly yet. So I will show you what I mean by fudgy once it's fudgy. Okay, so it went back in after we used this stick, which didn't come out fudgy, it came out wet. We went back into the oven just for another five minutes um, because it was quite wet and I'll show you what I mean there. So, if you can tell, it's cleaner, but the bits that are on are like, they're, they're bobbly, they're fudgy, rather than just a wet liquid, uh, which makes me now know that it's obviously cooked outside. So, this will sink, um, it's quite high up the now but as brownies cool they do tend to sink and what we're going to do is leave it in the tin to cool so this will take a while to cool down um, but you just need to leave it be um, unfortunately it just has to be left alone so we're going to leave it now to cool um, and then we'll be back I'll cut it into squares and I'll show you the insides so I'll see you in I don't know, like an hour or so maybe? Um, to you it'll be like two seconds, so... Also apologies for the puggle noises, I just gave them a wee treat and uh, they're sort of hard treats and they, um, they, they have to chew for a while. <laughs> apologies! Okay, it's been about an hour, there's a tiny, tiny heat in it but not much. So what we're going to do is we're going to push it back a bit and then use our paper handles to fill it out 
and then put it on a tray. So just gonna peel this back a wee bit and then we're gonna cut it. So how I tend to cut is I tend to cut in the middle and then out the way so that I can try and make it as even as possible without getting my ruler out because I'm not one of those guys. Your knife will come out um, and be covered in brownie. So, so it's a clean cut. I tend to wipe it each time. You don't have to, I mean, it's not perfect or anything, but just to make it a bit cleaner. Now I have my Marcus, so I would usually cut that in half again and have big chunks, but a normal person would cut that into three. Um, but as I say, I love the way Count Dankula, so it's going to be big pieces of brownie. That is the brownie I'll cut now. So I'll take this big slice here and show you what it looks like. You can see there, it's very, very fudgy. It is cooked, it's just squidgy and fudgy. So yeah, that's them done. I would eat them straight away. Um, sometimes I like to sprinkle some raisin sugar on, um, but because we have the chocolate nibbles on top, I'm not gonna bother. Either way, whatever you wanna do, that's them. They're fully made now, and yeah, you can enjoy. So it's now dark outside, and the light is still a bit weird, so I don't really know where to put it. It's if I look kinda ominous with my half shadow and stuff. I'm sorry, I'm not the best light person in the world. I'm not great at like knowing where to position things correctly. There you go. I mean, obviously the brownie is huge. It's like the size of like half my face. But um, yeah, this is this is my chocolate brownie recipe. If you like this recipe, um, please consider liking and subscribing. If you didn't like it, you're still here. Then hello, thank you for sitting through this. If you try this recipe and you like it, then please send me pictures. Tell me what you would put inside your brownies. Would you put bits of pretzels, bits of marshmallows, maybe M&Ms, bits of fudge maybe? Would you use galaxy chocolate? Would you just use darker chocolate? Like, what would you do differently? Realistically, you can mess around with this brownie recipe. You can put whatever chocolate you want in it. You can put any ingredients in it. As long as you follow the basic steps, you're good to go. I aim one day to have the brownie tin and all the edges. Uh, that is the dream. If you have that tin, then you have to make brownies and show me. You're a safety. I need that in my life. Anyway, thanks again for coming to watch me make brownies. I hope you liked this video. I hope you have a fantastic day or night. If you would like to support me in any way, shape or form, then all the links are below to Patreon and all that kind of stuff. And, and merch as well, I do have merch. Oh, there's new merch coming as well. Maybe it's already out. I don't know, but there is new merch coming. Uh, it's Buddha and Bronson merch, or it's out, because I don't know when this video will go out. So yeah, there's that. Anyway, I'm gonna go now, so um, thanks again, and I'll see you later. Bye. So I'm gonna try Sue Hulk's brownie. I'm excited about this. Here we go. Right, let's try this damn brownie. Mm. 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 It's really chocolatey, really soft, very rich. I feel like there could be a market of me just eating food and people watching it. Would someone, would people pay for that? That's a damn good brownie, you could sell those. Very good, well done too.